The following is a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society. What is the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, 22-24? Is faith a gift? Is faith the same as faithfulness? Is the fruit of the Spirit more individual or more corporate? Some of the things we'll be thinking about today in the next few minutes here on Grace in Focus, the podcast broadcast ministry of the Grace Evangelical Society. Thank you for being here today. Our website is faithalone.org if you want to know more about us. You can find our resources, articles, blogs, and many more things right there at faithalone.org. Now here with today's discussion is Ken Yates and Bob Wilkin. Welcome to another episode, another exciting episode. Is this an exciting episode? A really big show. Well, we're here with another episode, and uh, there's a question from Stephen. It's a great question, and it involves a a couple of issues, so we're going to deal with it here. Stephen asks this question. If faith is not the gift of God, and here he's talking about, he doesn't say it, but I'm sure he's talking about Ephesians 2. Uh, eight and nine, yeah. Yeah, eight and nine. Why is faithfulness listed as one of the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians five twenty two through 23? So let's just real briefly on the Ephesians 2, um, where Paul says, by, by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. We at GES argue that convincingly, by the way, that uh, (laughs) even though some people say that the gift there is faith, that God gives faith to the elect. So if you're of the elect, he gives you faith. No, it's the concept of salvation by grace. That is, it is given by as a gift of God. And there's a couple of reasons for that. The first one is the word that is neuter in Greek, and the word faith is feminine in Greek. And neuter often goes back to a core idea or a concept, like, right. a concept like right. by grace you've been saved. Right. It generally would not go back. Rarely would it go back to a feminine or a masculine noun. Right. Uh, and it would naturally go back to the concept of by grace you've been saved through faith. And secondarily, we know this is true because Jesus said the gift of God is everlasting life. In John 4.10, which he clarified in verse 14, if you knew the gift of God, and then verse 14, he says, the living water will spring up into you into everlasting life. Well, that's the gift of God. Also, we know it's the gift of God from Revelation 22.17, where the Lord says, let anyone who wishes take the water of life freely. And that word freely is as a gift. As a gift, right. So, everlasting life or the message which leads to everlasting life is a free gift. Uh, faith is never listed as a gift. Uh, for example, in John five forty, Jesus says, you are unwilling to come to me that you may have life. Well, coming to me in John's gospel is believing. He's saying you're unwilling to believe. Right. Well, if faith is a gift, it has nothing to do with <laughs> That's right. willing or unwilling. Whether I'm willing or not, there it is, right. But, but now here's the problem with what Stephen is doing. He seems well, well, first to... of all, he says, okay, now uh, if, if I grant to you, here's right. the question, That faith is not, now he doesn't say whether he agrees or not, but if faith is not the gift of God, okay, go ahead. Well, then he seems to be saying that faithfulness is the same as faith. Right. And that in Ephesians 5. No, Galatians. I mean, Galatians 5, that faithfulness is the gift of God. Well, that it's a fruit of the Spirit. It's given by the Spirit. I think the question would be, Okay, so if the Spirit does not give faith okay. in, in Ephesians 2, why is it something that is produced by the Spirit in Galatians 5? All right, let's read the fruit of the Spirit real right. quick. And All this right. is found in 22 and but 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Now, Stephen evidently thinks that the word faithfulness there is a gift from the Holy Spirit, right? That's what I'm assuming. Therefore, from the every one of the words in this list is a gift from the Holy Spirit, correct? I'm, I would assume he would So say. love is, joy is, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. So every single believer has all these things. Is that correct? Well, it's interesting in his question. I didn't read it all. He goes, maybe I'm confusing sanctification. And so he, 
I think he's already seen. So he's given us the hint, and you were hiding that. <laughs> I was okay. hiding that part. You see All what you right. would say, right? I would agree that this is about sanctification, and. I would suggest that all of these things are corporate. That means they're part of the local assembly, the local church. And and let me just say that about that. I think that something in some of our blogs and magazine articles and, and videos point this out, that a lot of times we as Western evangelicals, we miss this. We miss this corporate emphasis in these epistles that, that, you know, we look at everything so individualistic as Westerners. Well, if you look preceding in the context, he warns them not to walk in the flesh, which is legalistically. He's talking to believers and he's warning them not to buy into the false teachings of the Judaizers, which would lead to walking in the flesh. And he says in verse 15, if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. So one option is that we tear one another up in the body of Christ. The other option is the fruit of the Spirit, where we build one another up in the body of Christ. And by the way, the fruit of the flesh is listed first in 19 through 21. The works of the flesh are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, etc., all of these things are corporate, too, I would say. Yes, look at them. Dissensions, uh, envious, yeah. murders. These are things that impact other people. Right. You know, it's not just us. Right. right. Now, you can argue all these things have individual application. And, of course, an individual believer, when you look at the fruit of the Spirit, an individual believer can have love and not the feeling of love, but can love people even outside of the local church, right? They can be loving people. They can be joyful people. They can be peaceful people, even outside the local church, long-suffering, kind, good, faithful, gentle, and having self-control. But in the context of the book, he's talking about the local church and what fruit you will see from the person walking in the flesh as compared to the one walking in the spirit. So I would agree with Stephen when you clarified it that this is talking about sanctification. And it's saying that the believer who walks in the Spirit, which means I'm not focusing on the commandments, I'm not getting sucked into circumcision and worshiping on the Sabbath and keeping the law of Moses and this sort of thing and thinking somehow that my eternal destiny hinges on my works. And I would say on the corporate aspect of this, If I'm a legalist like that, Mm -hmm. there's a corporate aspect here because, okay, let's look at the Jew-Gentile breakdown here. If I'm a Jew and I'm keeping all these things, I'm eating the right food, I'm circumcised, I'm keeping the right days, well, I'm going to cause dissensions within the body because I'm going to judge those believers who aren't doing those things. Well, that happened in Galatians 2. Exactly. Where Barnabas and Peter withdrew, evidently, from a Lord's Supper meeting and sat in a separate corner with the Jewish believers and ate the kosher food and wouldn't eat the food of the Gentiles and wouldn't be even associated with the Gentiles. And Paul says they were not being straightforward about the truth of the gospel. Yes. That was divisive. Yeah, and you can see, we didn't talk about all of them, but notice these works of the flesh, hatred, contentions, jealousies. All those things are produced by legalism. And it's how I relate to other believers within the body here. Right. And the same way as you pointed out, the fruit of the Spirit here, kindness, patient or long-suffering, love. Right. It's not not telling me to love myself. No. It's telling me to love others within the body gentleness. And when it calls it fruit, okay, this is something produced by the Spirit. But as Stephen went on to say, it's produced in the Spirit by those who are being sanctified. Right. Those who are growing in the faith. In the words of the uh, epistle to the Galatians, they're walking in the Spirit. And so these things that the Scriptures teach and the things that Paul is teaching the Galatians, that they are one body, that there's not a Jew and Gentile, that if you are taught these things and the Spirit transforms your mind and you're walking in obedience to these things, he is producing this in the believers there at Galatia. And, uh, right. And so this is not just 
a gift, like you said at the beginning, that everyone has, that all believers are all these things, just it's given by God and you have no say so in it whatsoever. We need to be people whose lives are being transformed by the renewing of our minds. Now, I'm going outside of Galatians to Romans, Romans 12, 12 too, right? yeah. But still, that's who we need to be. Or to go to the book of 1 John, we need to be believers who are walking in the light and confessing our sins, 1 John 1, 7, 1 John 1, 9. I might mention, when we talk about walking in the Spirit, I used to be on staff with what's now called CRU, Campus Crusade for Christ, and we had a booklet called How to Be Filled with the Holy Spirit. And we used to teach people that in order to be filled with the Spirit, you would exhale spiritually, you would confess your sins, and you would inhale spiritually. That's asking the Holy Spirit to take control. And you were supposed to do this throughout the course of your day. So you'd be aware of a sin, you'd literally go, <laughs> <laughs> and you, when you went, <laughs> you'd be confessing your sins, and when you breathe back in, you'd be asking the Spirit to take control. And the idea was... I think I would hyperventilate and pass out after... <laughs> But the idea was somehow the Holy Spirit would take control of your life. Well, the problem with that is if the Holy Spirit took control, we'd never sin, right? Mm -hmm. And we'd never lose control because once the Holy Spirit has control, why would he let go? But the whole idea was kind of forced because it seemed like, you know, they would go with don't get drunk with wine, whereas in dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. And they were saying wine can control you, so the Spirit can control you. No, walking in the Spirit is walking in the freedom with which Christ has set us free, which means the Spirit of God is taking the Word of God and changing our minds, changing our thinking, and that transforms our behavior. To be filled with the Spirit merely means we're spiritual. Well, actually, there's two uses of filled with the Spirit in Acts. One is they were special empowerment to speak the Word boldly. And secondly, it was one who is spiritual. Like they picked Stephen, one of the first deacons, because he was full of the full spirit, of spirit, meaning he was spiritual. He was also full of wisdom. He was wise. And I believe, by the way, both kinds of filling happen today. God sometimes specially enables us to witness or to preach or to do other things. We don't know it's coming. But after the fact, we can say, you know, I think God was really at work there. Sometimes on this show, I feel that way. Like sometimes it seems like there's more work of the Spirit in us on some of these shows. Okay, let's wrap this up because we're out of time. Yeah, but Steve, the basic thing is you're right. Faith in Ephesians 2 is not a gift of God, and the faithfulness is not something that God gives every believer to something that believers are transformed by the Spirit as they walk in obedience to the things that are taught in the Word of God. Great question. Yep, that's right. And, and keep grace, grace in focus. focus. Thank you both for that great discussion. Would you be interested in some free ebooks on topics you hear on this program? Well, if you are, you need to come visit us at faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. They're designed to help you mature and grow in your understanding of the faith and scripture. So come visit us at faithalone.org. We are so thankful for our financial partners who keep us on the air. Every gift is tax deductible and very much appreciated. If you'd like to find out how you can give, go to faithalone.org. On the next episode, what about the Jesus Revolution and Lonnie Frisbee's Gospel? Join us for the next episode, and until then, let's keep grace in focus. The proceeding has been a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society.